Hey game devs, I'm Jason and today we're diving into a key concept in game programming, especially when we're talking about Unity development, and that's interfaces. We're going to explore what they are, why they exist, and how you can use them in various scenarios for your games. We'll talk about abstractions, building mod systems for your games, unit testing, and creating robust event systems. Before we dive into examples, let's first understand what interfaces are. In the simplest terms, an interface in C-sharp is a contract for a class. It's like a blueprint that defines a set of methods, properties, or events, but it doesn't provide any implementation for them. The classes that use this interface must provide the implementation. You can think of it as a plug and socket system. The interface is a socket defining what kind of plug can fit into it, while the classes are plugs themselves designed to fit into the socket. It's a powerful tool in object-oriented programming, and it's about to become your new best friend in Unity development. Now that we've got a handle on what interfaces are, you might be wondering, why do they exist? What's their purpose? Well, the answer lies in the heart of object-oriented programming, code reusability and encapsulation. Interfaces allow us to define a common set of behaviors that classes can share. So even if these classes have nothing else in common, they can still follow the same contract. In short, interfaces are like a universal language that our classes can speak, allowing them to work together seamlessly. All right, let's bring this concept to life with an example. Imagine we're building a game where our player can interact with different objects, say a door, a treasure chest, and an ancient alien artifact. Even though these objects are different, they share a common feature. They can be interacted with. This is where interfaces come in. We can define an iInteractable interface with a method called interact, then each of our classes, door, treasure chest, and ancient artifact, can implement this interface and provide their own unique interactions. The beauty of this approach is that our player doesn't need to know the specifics about what it's interacting with. It just needs to know that it can be interacted. This is abstraction in action, simplifying our code and making it more flexible. Now let's go a little bit deeper and see how we can expose mono behavior properties. Let's try a different example where we have a simplified Diablo style game and we want our player to be able to do a wild swing that damages the five closest enemies. Using interfaces, we can abstract away how they take damage, but if we're referencing an I take damage interface, how will we know where it is and which ones are the closest? The solution is simple. We can add the transform property to our interface, and since our class inherits from mono behavior, it's already implemented. This also works for the game object, enabled, is active and enabled, tag, name, and hide flag properties. Next up, we're going to see how interfaces can be used to create extensible code with plugins. Plugins, or mods, are a way to extend the functionality of your game, and interfaces can provide a structured way for your game to interact with them. Imagine you're building an RTS, and you want to allow players to create plugins that add new types of AI behavior. You could create an iAI behavior interface that AI plugins must implement. This way, your players can add new AI behaviors to your game. All they have to do is create a new mod that implements the interface, build the DLL, and place it in the right folder of your game. And you can also easily expose events to mod developers so that they can see things like when an NPC dies or when something spawns or whatever other data that you want to give them. To make this work, you'll want to create a separate project outside of Unity. Create a class library project using Visual Studio or whatever IDE you prefer, place the IAI behavior in that library, build it, and then put the DLL in your plugins folder. Just make sure that you don't have another copy of the interface in your project or things won't work. It will get mixed up on which version of it you want. Then you just give your players that DLL and they can add reference to it and start building plugins that can be loaded dynamically. Now let's tackle unit testing. Unit tests are vital in game development, allowing us to catch bugs early and ensure our code behaves as expected. And interfaces are a requirement for making good unit tests. Let's consider a scenario where we have a player class that plays sound effects through a sound manager class. When we want to unit test our player class, we don't want to depend on the actual sound manager. We want to isolate the player code. When we run our unit tests, we don't want a bunch of sound playing, and if we try to run unit tests on a system that doesn't have a sound device like in the cloud, we don't want them to fail. So this is where interfaces come to the rescue. We can define an iSound Manager interface and then create a mock sound manager that implements this interface for testing purposes. In our unit tests, we can inject the mock sound behavior into the player, allowing us to precisely control the sound manager's behavior and concentrate on our testing efforts for the player. Now, let's explore another powerful application of interfaces in Unity. 
using them as event systems. Let's start with some of the built-in interfaces that Unity provides that serve as event handlers. One example is the eye pointer down interface, which allows us to detect when a UI element is clicked or touched. By implementing this interface in a script attached to a UI element, we gain access to the on pointer down method. Unity's UI system automatically calls this method when the associated UI element is interacted with, giving us the opportunity to respond accordingly. However, we're not limited to just the built-in interfaces. We can create our own custom event systems using interfaces. By defining our own interfaces with specific methods, we establish those contracts that other scripts can implement to handle and respond to events in our game. For example, we can create an iPlayer death handler interface with an onPlayer death method. By implementing this interface, other scripts can subscribe to the player's death event and trigger actions such as displaying a game over screen, resetting the level, or saving the player's progress. I know not everyone likes using interfaces this way, so please let me know your thoughts. And if you have other uses for interfaces you'd like to see covered, start a discussion in the comments. I hope this video provided you with some valuable insights into the potential of interfaces with Unity game development. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials and insights.